how many of you have ever thought of something that you could do and you would you were so excited and you believe within your heart that you could truly accomplish it and then as soon as you go sh uh, share the idea with other people they break you down and um say that it would never be possible so let me take you back to 2013 um uh, at the age of 12 i wrote my very own book called it's up to me seven ways to make a difference and the famous robert kiyosaki author of the book rich dad poor dad actually wrote the forward of my book since then the book got translated into russian became a bestseller and then i started doing uh, inspirational speaking right around the world places like russia kazakhstan america canada and um at about the age of 15, I thought, okay, this is all great. Like, I'm doing inspirational things, but I want to do something bigger, something better. So my dad was an airline pilot, and my mom is an aircraft engineer instructor. So I was pretty much born with aviation. So I came up with the idea, what if 20 teenage, well, teenagers just fly a plane across Africa? So I run downstairs to my dad, and I say, Dad, what if teenagers fly a plane across Africa? And he's like, yes but that's already been done. You need to do something unique. So I went back to my room a bit disappointed and I grabbed my life support and I go through Instagram and I see this advert of a sling aircraft that can actually be a kit built aircraft. And then I thought, well, what if 20 teenagers build an aircraft and then we fly it across Africa? So I run back downstairs and I said, dad, what if 20 teenagers build an aircraft, and then we fly that airplane across Africa. And he said, wow, Meg, that's brilliant. Let's do it. So we had a lot of challenges getting there. First of all, we had to approach the company who actually supplies the aircraft and say to them, okay, well, this is what we want to do. And we thought their reply is going to be, yes, that's amazing. Let's do it. And they were like, no. <laughs> and we tried again. And they said, no, again. And we tried again and they said no again. And eventually I think we annoyed them so much that they were like, do you know what, just do it. <laughs> so then we um, managed to raise funds to be able to get the kit built. And then we also had to get the teenagers. So we went through a whole selection process from 1,500 kids, we narrowed it down to the top 20 teenagers, and then we built the airframe of the aircraft in less than 10 days. So that was absolutely amazing. But in the meantime, we had so many challenges, and personally for me and Agnes in schools and stuff, when we would tell the children that, no, we're building an aircraft and flying it across Africa, they would go like, Neow. and they just tease us, and they'd be like, do you really think you can fly aircraft and teenagers will build an aircraft? And it was really hard for me in school because people were always bullying, bringing me down because they didn't believe that they'd be able to do it. So now they're limiting us. Let me take you to 28 March, 28 March 2019. And my instructor says that I can go solo. So for you, those of you who don't know what a solo is, it is um, when a pilot is busy doing their license, it is the very first time that they can fly without um, anybody with them. So as I learn, la line the aircraft up with a runway and I take a handful of uh, power, the whole aircraft starts to rumble and I take off and as I look back on the runway, I'm like, wow, <laughs> I'm busy completing another, another piece of the puzzle. Two weeks later, we're eventually ready to test fly the aircraft that the teenagers built. And once again, they take a handful of power and as the aircraft is in the air, she purrs like a beauty. And I realized that we are busy completing the pieces of the, this puzzle. Let's fast forward to 15 June 2019. We have selected certain teenagers pilots to uh, help us fly this aircraft across Africa and as we are taking off we've got my father so as I mentioned my dad is an airline pilot and we are at Cape Town International it's a very cold winter's morning and um, the teenagers in the teenage aircraft so the aircraft that was built by the teenagers was also flown by teenage pilots qualified pilots 
And beside us, we have a support aircraft. Now, the support aircraft was built in the factory, so that was not built by the teenagers. So then we take a handful of power and start heading north to get to Cairo. And to get to Cairo, we had to do different stops right throughout Africa because the aircraft only had a limited range because it's a very small uh, aircraft. It's a four-seater aircraft. And... Um, we did different stops from South Africa to Namibia and, and all the way up into Africa. And what I found about the Africans is they have so much hope that, you know, they don't always have that much, but they believe that they can accomplish so much more. And they always welcomed us with the warmest hearts and made it possible for us to enjoy our experiences there. And um, they were always so keen to um, teach us the languages or some of their culture things. Like in Kilimanjaro, we made our own coffee and uh, from the beans. Anyway, let's fast forward three weeks later and eventually we might made it to Cairo. And that's a life lesson I already learned. That in life we have these goals, these big goals. But to be able to get there you need to break it down into smaller pieces. So we had to fly to all the different countries, stop and refuel to be able to get to our destination. And it's the same in life, is that you have to break your big goal down into smaller pieces to get to your destination. And eventually after we were in Cairo, it was time to return back home. So we started doing longer legs and we got in Uganda and we were flying in formation with the aircraft that the teenagers built and then the support aircraft, the aircraft that my dad was flying. And um, we hear a voice in a, on the radio a few hours later and they're like, uh, my dad asked, what is the aircraft's pressure supposed to be? And we said, no, anything between two and three bar." And they said, well, ours is at 1.5, which is in the caution range. So um, we're going to have to take some precautions. And later on, the, the pressure started dropping to 1.4, 1.3, 1.2, 1. And we are in over Tanzania, their, their pressure is at like one um, bar. And they said, no, they're going to have to do an uh, emergency landing. So they said to us, continue to Malawi. We were flying to Malawi, Le Le Longwe. We will meet you guys tomorrow in Lakoma. So we got to um, Le Longwe and they said, no, they did the engine run ups. Everything is fine. They did check us, all the temperatures, pressures, everything is in the green. We joined, um, we flew to Lakoma to join them over there. And the whole day we were having so much fun swimming and everything. And eventually, the sun, the sun was starting to set and the other pilots were like, guys, the other aircraft was supposed to land. The other aircraft was already supposed to be here. Where are they? And I'm like, don't worry. My dad's got more than 10,000 hours. He'll be totally fine. Anyway, later that um, afternoon, an, another pilot comes from the airport and it's a very small airport. So I'm like, hey, um, didn't you maybe see another aircraft at the airfield because we were waiting for um, someone else to come and didn't you maybe see them? And he's like, no, there's no one. So we quickly grabbed the handheld radio and tried to contact the other aircraft, the one that my dad was flying. And for more than an hour, we were like, Tango for Foxtrot, this is the common ground, do you copy? And no response. Eventually, the sun is starting to set and we still haven't heard anything. And I'm starting to wonder, I'm like, what's wrong? Because they have satellite phones. They were supposed to call us already and we haven't heard anything. So later I was lying in the hammock and it's pitch dark and I haven't heard anything. And the pilots come to me and um, I said, hey guys, have you heard anything about my dad? And they immediately just put their heads down. And they say, your mother wants to talk to you. So they hand me a phone and I answer. I'm like, hello? And my mom is crying on the end. And she's like, me? Dad crashed. And I'm thinking, well, people do survive air crashes, so maybe they're okay. And I'm like, um, are they okay? No. They did. And here I am 
in the middle of Africa with nothing with me. I'm in Africa waiting for my dad to come in the aircraft and I've got absolutely nothing. Anyway, so the next day we have to leave the aircraft there and we fly back commercially and it's the memorial. But two weeks later, I decide that I'm going to honor my dad and I'm going to finish this project. So we fly back to Malawi where we left the aircraft and we fly the aircraft back to South Africa. And it was a really hard time for me because in that time, I was still in matric, which is the very last school here. And I was busy with my exams and everything. And my dad always said to me, just get your matric. Like you don't have to um, get 80s or A's or anything. Just get the matric, matric certificates. So that's what I did. And I didn't do much studying, but I finished the matric. And eventually I ended up having three A's and the rest above 70. So Three, three of my points above um, 80 and the rest is 70. And that is something that I've learned, is that life doesn't go the way that you plan it. Because you have this image of, yes, this is exactly what I want and everything. But then stuff happens in life and we don't always understand why. But in the end, it is our journey that takes us to our our destination and it's not about the destination it's the journey so my message to you guys is to keep going because as I said not everything in life is going to go as we planned it but just keep going and life is going to knock you down it's going to feel like you can't take another step it's going to feel like you can't get up again but as soon as you just take those small steps and every day just keep taking those small steps eventually you're going to reach your goal. Thank you.